What is up, YouTube? In this video, I am going to uh, be discussing basically how it is that I found Betty, my dream van, and kind of the process that it involved, all the various hoops that I had to jump through, and I guess maybe some tips for finding your own kind of dream van if you're trying to avoid what everyone seems to be saying right now is something like eight or nine month long back orders. My name is Eric Johnson and welcome to my channel. In 2021, I bought a Ford Transit cargo van so I could convert it into the off-grid home of my dreams. I'll be documenting and sharing everything about this DIY van conversion. If you'd like to follow along, by all means, hit that subscribe button. First off, when I decided that I was gonna be pursuing this project, part of it was like half determination, like I was quite, uh, set on doing it, but it was also still sort of subject to the realities of, could I find something that I wanted that had all of the features or enough of the features that I thought were my must haves? Because if I couldn't find one, if, if or if the resulting cost, you know, if it was just well out of my budget, that had a huge impact basically on finding the van. So I guess like the very first step was determining my budget of knowing what I could afford and I went and got pre-approved at a credit union for an auto loan, which turned into a whole hurdle of issues as far as when I went through that pre-approval process, I was very direct with them. I was like, oh, I'm gonna go buy a, a Ford Transit. You know, I wanna do a van conversion. And so I was talking about, you know, cargo vans and no red flags came up. They were like, yeah, here, you know, you're approved for basically, I think it was like $55,000. Here's your pre-approval letter. You'll just take this to the dealer. And, and then when you're signing everything, they'll need to send us basically the, all the purchase information. And then we'll, we'll go ahead and issue them the final check. When we finally got to that step, my bank comes back and says, wait a minute, this is a commercial vehicle. You can't use an auto, like a personal auto loan to purchase a commercial vehicle. Sorry, this can't be done. You're gonna have to go through and get pre-approved with a commercial loan product, uh, which has way higher interest rates. So instead of the 2.29% interest rate that I have on Betty, the commercial loans were something like 6%. So almost, you know, more than double, almost three times, not quite, but quite a, quite a bit higher, which would then of course impact how much I could afford as far as like those monthly payments. And so instead of getting into like too much detail about how I finance it, I'm just gonna link right here, uh, the video of how I financed this van. And that goes into a lot more detail about kind of all the issues and hurdles, but how I was ultimately able to get a personal loan to finance my vehicle. But uh, once I had sort of that that dollar amount, what I qualified for as far as what I could purchase, that's when I started really actively searching a whole number of dealer websites uh, to see if they had inventory for a high roof extended van. Now, at the very beginning of my search, I was looking at all three options. You know, Ford Transits, Ram Pro Masters, and of course, Mercedes Sprinters. As far as why I narrowed down to a Ford Transit. Again, instead of getting into too much detail there, I'll just go ahead and link right up here, a whole dedicated video that I've already made as to why I chose the Ford Transit over the Ram Promaster and the Mercedes Sprinter. So if you wanna see that, you know, go ahead and check out that video. When I started looking at a whole number of dealer websites, it was actually kind of hard in the beginning to find dealers that had transit you know, or cargo van inventory. Like the Ford website, the way that it works, they were including inventory that wasn't really on the lot, uh, saying like, oh, this this vehicle is, is in stock at this dealership. Eight times out of 10, when I would call them, they would say, oh, we actually either don't have that vehicle yet because it's on order and they're still waiting for delivery, or they already had it, but it had been sold or it's currently, you know, someone's already got a hold on it or, you know, whatever. There's uh, quite a number of issues. But as soon as you, you do find something that you're kind of interested in, I would say reach out to the dealer directly. They will be the, they'll have the ultimate say of, yes, we have it on the lot. No, we don't have it on the lot. So instead of wasting time, trying to set up all this, the logistics of going and getting that van, make sure that the van is there on the lot first and foremost. 
and isn't already reserved. So once you've found your vehicle that's got all the bells and whistles that you want, you verified with the dealer it's on their lot and no one else has already put a deposit on that vehicle. Yeah, chances are <laughs> that dealership is not gonna be close to you geographically. When I was searching, I literally was searching, I think nine different states. At the time I was living in San Diego, California, which is already a pretty major city and has some pretty big dealerships, but I still couldn't find one in San Diego. I was also then searching in LA, San Francisco. So basically just California, all up and down the coast of California. I was looking in Portland, Las Vegas, Phoenix, Salt Lake City, Utah, uh, Reno, Nevada, and oh, Seattle. I looked up in Seattle. So like basically just the entire Western United States. What I did discover was when I was calling all these dealerships, you know, A, they're used to working with businesses. And so like they'll, they'll do a little bit more. They'll go out of their way to try and make a transaction happen. And so what I found was when I was calling like dealerships in Arizona, they said that they would be totally willing to come to the airport and pick me up at the airport with the van. So basically the combination of COVID changing how these businesses, how many transactions were taking place, not in person, just basically entirely online beforehand, what they recommended was they could mail all the documents, I'd sign it, mail it back, basically purchase the vehicle sight unseen, fly out there, they'd meet me at the airport with the van in hand, basically hand me the keys and then they would drive back to the dealership you know, on their own. And then I would leave from, you know, directly from the airport and kind of drive home. And they wouldn't charge anything for that. And so in some ways, they'll take like the extra steps to make the transaction happen. But the flip side was when you're discussing all these things with a dealership, they know A, that you're quite serious and B, that if you're willing to kind of fly out to a dealership to get a vehicle, you don't really have any negotiation power to suddenly say like, uh, but your price is too high. You know, you need to knock it down a couple grand. They're just gonna say, look, you can take the deal or I can just hang up with you and I've got like three other voicemails that I can respond to. I've seen a, a comment like, between the time that someone put down a deposit and when they got to the dealership, the dealer was like, I could have sold your van twice over. Like I've had enough people inquiring and enough interest. So something to kind of be mindful of is that you don't really have negotiation power as far as negotiating price, but what you can try and do is ask for some extra service on their end, you know, meet you at a particular location like the airport or something like that. So I guess one other tip is if you live in a major city or if you have family or friends that live in a major city, um, what you might do is just kind of look at the large dealerships that have like multiple locations. And sometimes the van that you, you know, if you find a particular van, uh, but it's either not near a convenient airport or a convenient place, you know, like some family or friends or where you live, um, ask the dealer if they will transfer that vehicle from one of their lots to another. What I found, and this was what happened with my case, was that Betty was located in LA, but they had a branch location in San Diego. And so they were willing to uh, transfer the van from their LA lot to their San Diego lot, completely free of charge. And basically, once they're willing to do that, they already had a policy that they would deliver the vehicle to any location within like 60 miles of their of their lot. So they basically drove from LA down to San Diego and dropped the van off to me completely free of charge. You know, it might not always be available, but it's definitely something to inquire because it, you know, if you can, that just might make the logistics of going and getting your van either less expensive for you or easier, you know, more convenient. Yeah, like I said, Betty, they dropped it off. And so actually the very first time that I saw Betty was in my own driveway. It's just something else seeing like your van on your driveway, you know, just kind of, I remember it struck me just how freaking big these vans were. But, you know, now that I've had her for a while and I'm, you know, it, she doesn't seem quite so big to me. She's still, she's still a big girl, but I don't know. She's grown on me. I guess that about sums up all the kind of major tips and hurdles of my purchasing experience. You know, I, like I said, I can definitely empathize with a lot of people, you know, mentioning in the comments of just how hard it is to try and find a van 
but at least with maybe some of these tips, it might make things a bit easier or a bit less time consuming because honestly, I, I spent weeks in my search process and hours and hours, you know, reaching out to various different dealers. I can definitely see that for some people, maybe that's something like they didn't, if you don't have the time, but on the flip side, if you don't have that much time, like if you can't dedicate the time up front to just get your van, a conversion project is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 30 fold <laughs> more time consuming than just that that search. It's like that's a drop in the bucket relative to the overall project. So I'd say just kind of stick with it. You know, you can find these vans. They're not impossible. You just have to work hard and harder than the next guy. You know, if someone else out there is willing to give up on like chasing after this dream of trying to convert a van because it's you know, that, that first hurdle of just finding the van is proving to be more difficult than they thought and maybe they just give up. Well, that's that's your cue to keep going. That means, you know, if you wanna make this a reality, you just gotta keep wanting it. And if you do want it, and if you're willing to put in that time, you can, like, you can make it happen. We're almost on a year. We're coming up on that one year mark when I started my process, you know, started this kind of journey and, oh, yeah, the emotions. <laughs> my face is leaking. <sighs> so anyways, I'll get off my little soapbox here, but just, I guess my advice is stick with it. You know, this, <laughs> it is a challenge. It is absolutely a hurdle, but it is just the first of many and yet so, so worth it. If you guys enjoyed this video, you might enjoy this video here about how it is that I am insulating or my insulation strategy for my uh, 2022 camper van conversion. If you guys have any questions though, let me know in the comments and I will see you guys in the next video.